What do the celestial dragons fear? Is it a treasure that can destroy the world? Perhaps it's the power to flip the world upside down? Is it the power to split the seas? Or is it the power of liberation? The celestial dragons fear the most ridiculous power in the world, which is the One Piece. What if I told you that there wasn't just one thing this power could do, but actually up to 8 different techniques or heavenly abilities going as simple as making your opponent laugh, to as crazy as telepathic messaging? This power isn't only the power that the Nikafu holds, but there's much more beyond that that even the Gorosei don't know about. Wizard of Ors here today and you're gonna want to stay tuned for this video because there are powers hidden between the lines that no one has seemed to bring up when regarding Luffy and the One Piece. These are the powers of the gods and it's what the Celestial Dragons have feared the most since the reign of power 800 years ago. Remember to like and sub if you're a true One Piece fan, and now let's get into it. Luffy is the last Will of D. He is for sure the youngest Will of D member that we know of as of right now, which would make him the very last member of the Dawn Clan, which signifies that he will be the one to bring the Dawn. Just like Whitebeard said, as long as that bloodline survives, their flames will never die. That will has been passed down from long ago, and in the future someday, a man will appear, bearing the weight of centuries of history on his shoulders, to challenge the world. So Whitebeard is basically saying that the inherited will of the bloodline of the Dawn, or the D clan will all be passed down to a single man. Since Luffy is the final one of that bloodline, and since he was born in the era that the ancient men said Joy Boy will appear, he is the man that will bring centuries of history on his shoulders. He will be the one that leads to shaking the world to its core. Now, how will Luffy do this, and what do his powers have to do with all this? What if I told you that throughout the whole story, Luffy has already been using the most ridiculous powers, which will eventually lead to the destruction of the Celestial Dragons? One of the powers of Luffy or Joy Boy has already been told to us in chapter 561. In this chapter we see Mihawk say that Luffy has the most dangerous ability in the entire ocean. This ability is to simply turn those around him into his allies. The people that are around him want to help him fight. In a battlefield, Luffy is the light of hope or the light that leads everyone else to believe in him or to believe that they can win. In almost every single arc or saga, the Straw Hat's wills are tested on how much they believe in Luffy's winning. Somehow he always comes through for them. He's basically just the Michael Jordan of One Piece going undefeated with his squad in the pre-time skip, retiring for two years, and then going undefeated in the post-time skip as well. Even if Luffy takes an L to Croc, NL, or Rob Lucci, he may lose that battle, but he will still win the war. I believe the way the Straw Hats believe in Luffy in almost every arc symbolizes how for ages upon ages, the D-Clan believed that Luffy will bring the dawn and defeat the Celestial Dragons. In the final war arc, Luffy will be tested for the last time, and as he's leading the dawn, his his comrades and fleet will have their faith in him. Wano is another great example of this major theme because we see Kaido continuously testing Luffy's and his comrades' wills. Even as Luffy supposedly died, certain characters don't give up or don't believe that it's over yet because they know that Luffy simply has the power to do the impossible, which is the power to create miracles. This all ties in with the biggest theme of One Piece, which is Romance Dawn. If you watched my last video, you'll remember that I say that Romance Dawn means the belief in the dawn. Not only does the Will of D have the belief in the Dawn's arrival, but by the endgame of the series, the whole world will have the belief in the Dawn and the belief that Luffy will bring it. This is one of Luffy's ultimate powers since if he can get people to have faith and seek the answer to freedom, he can get the whole entire world to change its course and slowly be flipped. Evidence of him being the actual answer to freedom that Roger said people should seek isn't only in every major saga that he frees and liberates people, but it's especially focused on in Impel Down and with Who's Who. In chapter 1018, Who's Who tells Jinbei that when he was in Impel Down, he heard a story, which was to pray to a certain man for salvation. This story was passed all the way down from ancient times because they believed in a legendary warrior that would free them. This warrior was called Sunga Nika and was known to bring laughter to their lips. So with all this information from who's who, I believe that this legend of Nika was passed down even 800 years later because the ancient people knew that Nika would one day return and free slaves. It's interesting that who's who learned this legend while it impelled down because that may show that the prison was a place where the story was very common and passed down from prisoner to prisoner throughout the ages. The people of ancient times knew that one day Nika would free slaves and prisoners from impelled down because that may very well be a part of the prophecy. In my opinion, this story or legend is is a part of the One Piece. In Impel Down, we learn that Luffy not only was one of the only people to ever break out of Impel Down, but was the only man to ever break in. 
Sengoku tells Garp how his son is the only single man to ever successfully infiltrate the prison. This shows us that the legend of Nika was in fact about Luffy. If you've watched my previous video, you will know that a big part of the laugh tale is what happened in the future. I'm even 100% positive that this infiltration of liberation is definitely a part of the laugh tale. Now you may ask, well how can I be so certain? I mean the laugh tale can definitely include it, but what's the evidence of you being 100% positive? Well, because in the very chapter that Luffy Luffy is leading the breakout with some of the most wanted criminals. The title for this chapter is Another Tale to Tell. To simply put it, this is another tale of Luffy or another part of the laugh tale. He already has some legendary tales to tell, like declaring war on the world government at Ennis Lobby, freeing Alabasta, and bringing peace within the land of Skypiea. But this may be his most legendary tale yet, since it's directly tied with the legend of Sun God Nika. I wonder if guys like Jinbei and Croc started to question who Luffy truly truly was after this event, since we know that the clinging of a savior is common among the people in Impel Down. This power of Nika to put smiles on faces far and wide and to be the embodiment of freedom is a power that Luffy obtained with the fruit, but I think some things go beyond what the fruit gave him. For example, the greatest level of Congress hockey and the ability to talk telepathically through sheer will. I'll explain these abilities later in the video, but even things like turning those around him into his allies doesn't necessarily seem a power from the fruit, but is even more of a godly ability within the seas than anything a devil fruit can give him. A parallel with this power is with Ors Jr. in Marineford. Remember how I said that I believe Ors the first or Onigashima was the original Joy Boy in my previous video since we see hints like the giant freezer, the straw hat, his name being that of a sun god and more. Well, in Marineford, we see that Ors Jr. also somewhat obtains his power to turn those around him into allies when he does the exact same things as Luffy. When Ors shows up, he leads the war by running recklessly to save Ace. Just like Luffy, he does this and it seems he's so reckless because if he allowed Ace to die, he'd want to die himself. One of the biggest themes since the East Blue Saga is that you should be willing to die for what you want. You shouldn't be scared to die for a dream whether if it's becoming the king of the pirates, becoming the great a swordsman or a great warrior of the sea. In Luffy's mind, he seems to believe that it's okay to die trying because if he didn't put his life on the line and try, he'd rather die. This is one of the deeper philosophical traits that Luffy has ever shown, but we also see it in Ors. Ors Jr. is willing to die and he even may have trying to do what he wants which is to save Ace. As both Ors Jr. and Luffy recklessly barge into the war, we see direct parallels with Whitebeard commanding his crew to back up or support Ors and Luffy. I mean, we even see two different panels of Whitebeard yelling something, which are practically the exact same as each other. In the chapter where Luffy explains that he'd want to die if he can't save Ace, it is titled Do What You Will, which could also be a reference to the devil or Ors. With all this being said, I believe all these hints are meant to symbolize that Luffy's great power was once used by another great man who went by the name of Joy Boy. The devil of One Piece was once just like Luffy and the world government put dirt on his name more than anyone else because he's the one that they feared the most. This power of Luffy even goes as far as being able to turn his enemies into his allies. Therefore, he literally flips the change of course in the world. He somehow finds a way to bring enemies together into one big army seeking freedom and going against the world government. We've seen this done countless times whether if it's Croc, Buggy, or Boa. We even see him shifting the beliefs of the marines with Kobe, Fujitora, and Smoker. Pirates, marines, samurai kingdoms, princesses will all be on the side of the dawn by the final war which will lead to the celestial dragon's defeat. I can even see situations where characters that are currently enemies like Kaido, King, Big Mom, Green Bull, and Katakuri joining Luffy in the end. Although he usually gets his enemies to join his side after liberating them, it also seems that they join him on a much deeper level than just because they owe him one. It seems that most who truly join forces with Luffy do this because of the amount of respect they have for him. Instead of conquering his enemies, he allows them to be free of thought. They freely choose to help him when he needs it. They freely start to believe in his potential in the world. They freely join his side. The only ones who don't and never will are most likely the celestial dragons because that would contradict the meaning of the will of D. As Luffy has the power to bring people together, to follow him, and to believe in him, they also believe in themselves and receive the passion to fight back for freedom. This somewhat reminds me of the powers of Bello Betty. Bello Betty of the Revolutionary Army has a devil
own fruit called the Pum Pum Fruit, which allows her to pump up average citizens into fighting for their own freedom. As she waves the flag that has the original Warrior of Liberation, she liberates people. This is a power that seems to be connected to Joy Boy, and although she herself needs the powers of the Devil Fruit to pump people up, Luffy doesn't. He seems to be more of a natural force in the world that can do it effortlessly. For Luffy, it's simply something that isn't even self-taught, but more so along the lines of being a part of his nature. As I've said in previous videos, I believe that the Jolly Roger originated from Joy Boy, since Oda tells us that the term Jolly Roger is another name for the devil. Well, if the Jolly Roger represents Joy Boy, then Joy Boy has been the symbol of faith for 800 years. In Drum Island, Dr. Hiraluk tells us that the Jolly Roger is a symbol of faith. Pirates have been waving their Jolly Rogers for centuries while faithfully believing in the skull and crossbones without even realizing it. Joy Boy's return will bring the highest level of faith in the world that it's ever seen. With all this being said, let's discuss how Luffy has already begun to awaken the most ridiculous hockey feats throughout the entire series. The first one I need to bring up is his ultimate power of telepathic messaging. I've already made a video on this, but I'm going to bring this topic back up because I haven't seen anyone talk about it, even though it's one of the most overpowered things that Luffy seems able to do. Right after Kaido sends Luffy flying down into the ocean and says, looks like you couldn't be Joy Boy either, somehow Luffy sends a message to Momo, which seems to be the voice of all things. Things. He tells Momo to tell everyone that he's still going to defeat Kaido. Now, this gets very weird because we've never seen any man talk using the voice of all things. We've seen them understand or hear the voice of all things, but not actually communicate using it. We saw Momo talk to Zunisha by yelling out loud using his mouth and not talking through his mind. We saw Roger and Odin yell out to the Sea Kings, but they didn't actually communicate with them through their mind. With Shirahoshi, it's hard to tell if she's talking to the Sea Kings telepathically or through her mouth. I mean, Shirahoshi she should be able to use the voice of all things and not just hear it, because she is a reincarnation of Poseidon and will be needing to command the Sea Kings at some point. Okay, so now that you know all this, let's ask the question, what is this power of Luffy and why is it so important? I believe this power of Luffy will be used in the final war to command people what to do or if he needs help. It's barely being brought into the story right now, so it could be used more and more as he learns how to use it. The craziest thing about this power and the reason I think he's going to use it constantly in the final war is because he doesn't just talk to Momo, but he also talks to those without the voice of all things, which is Law's crew. Someone on Law's submarine says, it's like we could hear his voice even though we're underwater, let's worry about that later. So how did Law's crew hear Luffy even though he was knocked out underwater and not near them? Well, because he may have unlocked one of the most ridiculous feats of observation hockey or of the voice of all things. This power is even better than the voice of all things because he can use it with literally anyone, not just those with the ability to hear everything. This makes me think that as the warrior of liberation leading the front lines of the war, Luffy will be able to lead everyone or communicate with them using this power. Remember how I said in my previous video that just like how Shirahoshi is a weapon that is actually a natural force in the world and not built by man. Well, maybe the One Piece or Joy Boy is a similar thing. Maybe Luffy or Joy Boy is a natural force in the world that can bring races together and lead them. What Mihawk said also goes along with this, since it shows he has powers beyond his own understanding. Luffy is simply a force that naturally liberates people and that brings the dawn. This telepathic messaging power that Luffy has also reminds me of Skypiea. In Skypiea, we see that Isa is naturally able to hear the voices of everyone throughout the whole land in the sky. She can hear when people die or when they are coming near her. Just like how she was naturally born with the power to have some of the best observation hockey, maybe Luffy was also born with this ability and he has finally unlocked it. If this is Luffy's observation hockey ability that will allow him to surpass everyone, I also believe he will get a Congress hockey ability that will allow him to even surpass guys like Shanks, Whitebeard, and Roger. This Congress hockey ability will have to be so insane and so extreme that no one could be expecting it. To conquer the gods of the world, Luffy will have to get some abilities that have never even been seen. Especially since he's a god of creation, he may create new hockey techniques along with gear 5 techniques. With all this being said, let's take a look at what Odin says about what he learned at the One Piece. According to Odin, there will be a massive war that will split the seas themselves. In other words, in 20 years, the primary figures of this war will muscle their way into the new world. So he's basically telling us that the primary leaders of the final war of One Piece will lead to the destruction of the world and will split the seas themselves. Now let me ask, what does he mean by 
split the seas. I believe he's referring to when the red line is destroyed, the spleas will literally be split because such a massive piece of land will come down. And as discussed in my last video, the one piece is the one that is gathering the ancient weapons and bringing them together. So basically, the one piece will be the one that will lead to the seas to be split, right? Well, if this is the case, I was also thinking that what if there's another meaning behind the term splitting the seas? I believe it's 100% a fact that Odin is referring to the destruction of the red line, but I was also thinking there's a small chance that this could also foreshadow another ability of Luffy's. What if Monkey D. Luffy gets a Conqueror's Hockey ability that allows him to split the seas? I mean, where else have we heard the term to split? a piece of nature. Every time those with the Ryo ability clash, they split the heavens. There was even the case with Roger and Whitebeard where their swords didn't touch. Now how could Luffy surpass even those abilities of Roger? Well what if in Endgame One Piece as he either clashes with Blackbeard or Imsama, he splits the oceans at the same time as the heavens? I feel like Oda is the type to do such a biblical or godly reference because he's done it many times in the past. I honestly don't have too much evidence behind Luffy splitting the seas himself Himself, but I thought it would be really cool to see him do such a thing. Another thing with Odin basically saying that the primary figures of this war will be the ones to split the seas is that Luffy may not have the only ability to do so. Blackbeard is also a part of the worst generation and he also went into the new world at the same time as Law and Kid. Blackbeard's power as of right now is a bit unknown but if he truly can possess the same abilities as Whitebeard then he himself can split the seas at any given moment. Another guy that seems to have an ability to split split the seas is Law. With his recent awakening, it seems that his devil fruit powers almost seem limitless. If he can shoot Big Mom into the biggest and deepest hole I've ever seen in my life, then he should also possess the power to split the seas or at least cause enough destruction that could split them. I've got a big Law video coming out soon on who he truly is and his role in the story, so remember to like and subscribe with the notification bell turned on if you like videos like this one. The last ability of the One Piece that I want to discuss has to do with Nika. According to the Gorsei, Nika has the ability to put smiles on people's faces far and wide. Who's Who also told Jinbei that Nika was known for bringing laughter to people's lips. Now this right here is what I consider to be one of the most ridiculous powers in the world. Making people laugh or smile is such a ridiculous power because it naturally makes your enemies not take you seriously which leads to them possibly letting their guard down and not being able to fight like they usually do. I believe that only those with the strongest wills will not be able to laugh while fighting Luffy and will be able to actually fight him normally. Imagine competing with someone, whether it's in a sport, a video game, or anything else, and the opponent you're facing is making you laugh while also beating you. If you can't get your act together and take it more seriously, then there's a good chance that you're going to lose the competition. As Luffy makes his opponents laugh, he's still fighting at his full strength and in his true form. Even though it seems he's goofing off, we see him using the most goofy moves yet at the same time destroying Kaido. This style of combat isn't only funny for us the reader, but it's also funny funny for the ones fighting Luffy and it automatically makes them confused because it's not like anything they've ever seen. I believe Oda will really expand on this awakening power of Luffy in the war arc and we'll see him make many enemies crying out with laughter while getting their butts kicked. With all this being said, these are all of the powers of the One Piece that will most likely destroy the Celestial Dragons. Luffy is the divine punishment that is coming for them. He is the dawn that is coming to change the world forever. He is the one that gives everyone faith and passion to fight alongside him. He is the one that has the powers to split the seas and to telepathically communicate with others. He also has the power to make the whole world happy and laugh. These are the heavenly powers that the celestial dragons fear the most because they know it's the only thing that can take them down. As they hear the drums of liberation coming from a far distance in the sea, their hearts will drop in fear because they know the biggest enemy of the gods is coming.